Well, I never thought that I would be saying this, but apparently The Walking Dead is actually a real thing. Guys, you saw the thumbnail, and you probably thought to yourself, oh, God, you, you, God, that's just, it's disgusting what the hell these people were going through, all zombified and everything. And, of course, we used to use the Walking Dead joke to refer to people who, um, let's just say, were all about the, uh, they were all about the benefits. They were all about getting that benefit, all about getting that extra coin from the federal government. They were, they were all about that. And, of course, they were mindless. They were soulless. They practically were zombies. And then you look at what's going on with the fentanyl crisis here in America. Now, guys, before we go any further, I'm going to be rolling you guys a good two minutes or so. This video is actually going to be, quite frankly, pretty well clip space because there's a lot of things to get into. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at this. Officials have launched a new program to track the so-called flesh-eating zombie drug. It's called xylazine. The animal tranquilizer has been increasingly showing up in local street drug supplies. Kareen Winter is live in downtown L.A. with those details. Hi there, Lou. Well, from law enforcement officials to addiction um, specialists out there, there's a huge, a growing concern about the effects of this drug on the streets of Los Angeles, and that's prompted new action by LA County Sheriff's officials. The deadly opioid fentanyl. It's not the only potent narcotic ravaging the streets of Los Angeles. I've never seen anything like what we're dealing with right now. The animal tranquilizer, xylazine, also known as a flesh-eating zombie drug, is saturating the drug market locally, sometimes disfiguring users who develop severe sores. In some of the most extreme cases, people have had limbs amputated. Others have died from overdoses. We had a, a, a woman come in and her, and her sister had passed away from a fentanyl overdose. But not only was it a fentanyl overdose, her, her skin was starting to rot, the muscles on her leg and her arm. So that's a sure sign of xylazine. LA County Sheriff's officials now taking steps to track the presence of xylazine or trank in confiscated drugs. Why hasn't it been more on the radar for authorities? Xylazine isn't illegal. It's not a controlled substance. So whenever crime lab analysts detected the additive in other substances like fentanyl, it wasn't immediately flagged. Trank when added to fentanyl increases a user's high. It's really uh, gruesomely disfiguring people, much more likely to stop someone from breathing. And the things that come along with xylazine, it's a, it's a vasoconstrictor. So when you're injecting it, it's actually reducing the blood circulation. Both the DEA and health department have issued urgent warnings about xylazine. Some consider the county's pilot program a small step in this massive drug war with a staggering increase in deaths. But they say this move will give officials a better sense of the drug's prevalence on the streets of L.A. and how to counter this new threat. And what makes this drug especially dangerous is that Narcan cannot be used to reverse the effects of an overdose since strength is not an opioid. That's so basically, this is a vasoconstrictor, which is, of course, legal. Even though fentanyl itself, if sold illegally, is illegal. You know, there was this guy, actually, there is this guy who's running for president right now who believes that... Uh, we should uh, execute the illegal fentanyl dealers. Don't worry, I'll get to that here in a second because I've got to come up with some form of solution towards the end of this video because at this moment in time, it is almost as if to say what Thomas Sowell's words were 100% true. We're suffering from a, uh, we're suffering from an extreme amount of trade-offs, meaning no actual honest-to-God solutions to the problem. But don't worry, we'll do more videos on that in the future. So you've got this drug hitting the street and it's turning people practically into what the hell you just saw, zombies. And apparently, it's, uh, it can legally be used. Now, you probably think to yourself it should be banned outright. However, I don't know if banning it outright would be 100% uh, viable here because, yes, you should ban it. But at the same time, though, is that really and truly a solution? Or maybe should we be going after the drug dealers, the cartel dealers? Or maybe should we enter in another trade war with another country? You see, the reason why I'm bringing up those possibilities is because, believe it or not, CNN actually did a piece on this, and this would actually surprise you. Make sure you guys stick around for the next few minutes and watch this all the way through because, yeah, even I didn't know this was going on. 50 times the number of people who died on 9-11. So I think if we can use our military effectively to take out 
terrorists like bin Laden and Soleimani and al Zawahiri on the other side of the world, we can take the same steps to take out the cartels and the drug cartels south of the border in Mexico. San Diego ports coming across the border and of course coming from China. China is at war with the United States and some of the most, how do I say, some of the weirdest ways possible. It's obviously not kinetic. It's obviously using drugs to send to our streets knowing that we're going to actually take advantage of them. You got the Mexico president right there claiming that it's our problem, it's our fault, but yet every time I turn around, you're always crapping people on us and you're always crapping uh, the cartel dealers on us like crazy. I mean, this is the thing about Mexico is you really and truly can't trust them. I'm not talking about the Mexican people. I love the Mexican people. I love the Hispanic people. I love people from Cuba. I love people from Puerto Rico. I love people from the Dominican Republic. I love Hispanics in general the same exact way I love people of color. I wish we could all get along, but this right here is the world that we live in, a world that has been, of course, usurped by a Marxist agenda. The thing is this right here, the Mexico president is obviously not helping. If I recall correctly, that guy that I mentioned earlier who talked about executing the illegal drug dealers, he was actually, he had a bit of a handle on things. Of course, the border was not to fully, the wall was not fully built because you had to reinforce the previous fence and wall, but obviously it did not get done. Hopefully it could get done if he gets reelected. But here's the deal. Mexico is not helping the situation out. They are not your friend. They continue to crap these people over here. And of course, to go on top of that, they're taking advantage of Democrat governors that quite frankly are in fact implicit meaning that they are not doing anything about this, nor do they want to do anything about this. Gavin Newsom the other day uh, was, uh, let's just say he backtracked on reparations. The reason why he did that was because, well, in the case of reparations, obviously California's $32 billion or being $32 billion deficit, they're not going to pay anything out, which makes me think you're probably about to have some problems. I've spoken about Chicago. I had a video come out on Monday about this, on how it is that black voters in Chicago are getting pissed off with more and more people coming across the border, going through their areas. I got to wonder, are they possibly bringing this myth with them? Is this an actual invasion? And my response to that would be, yes, it would be. However, there is somebody who did have another, how do I say, solution to this. Make sure you guys listen to this right here, fully through. To, in a matter of moments and sometimes seconds, identify whether someone presents a threat coming into the station or not. Among the deadliest threats, illicit fentanyl. So we want to feel the door to make sure it doesn't feel heavy and there's nothing in there. The CBP tells us that more than half of all the fentanyl found at U.S. borders comes from ports here in San Diego. Officials say this is ground zero for illicit fentanyl smuggling. We will probably double what we saw last year within the next month or two. That's double the amount of fentanyl seized in all of 2022 in just the first four months of this year. But before the fentanyl even reaches the U.S. border, you need to know where it's coming from. And for that, we start not over there in Mexico, but in China. Specifically, Shijiazhuang, China, a city some 200 miles south of Beijing, known for manufacturing pharmaceutical drugs and once a major hub for fentanyl production. In May 2019, facing mounting U.S. pressure, China took a major step and banned the production and sale of all known forms of fentanyl, including any variants of the drug. That was a big step. That stopped fentanyl, fentanyl, the powder, coming in from China direct into the United States. Matt Donahue worked for the DEA for more than three decades, retiring last year as its chief of foreign operations. While he says finished fentanyl is no longer flowing out of China, precursor chemicals the ingredients to make fentanyl are. If you can get to the precursor chemicals, you're going to have less fentanyl. You have less fentanyl, you have less overdose deaths. Using that same approach, in recent years, the U.S. levied new sanctions against a handful of Chinese chemical manufacturers to combat the global illicit drug trade. We looked into one of them, Hobea Tun Trading Company, accused of being involved in fentanyl precursor chemical sales. Public records show the company was dissolved in 2021. But our investigation found the same email address once listed for Hobea Tun now linked to this Chinese company, Shangxi Naipu, registered just days after Hobea Tun began to shut down. And look at Hobea Tun's Facebook page, still active. It links to Shangxi Naipu. Not to mention the WhatsApp contacts advertised for both companies, the same. Cartel country, as some see it. We got exclusive access with the Mexican army as they hunt for drug labs. 
They took us to their latest fentanyl lab bust, this unassuming home. That white building right there, that's the fentanyl lab. The Army says they seized 270,000 pills here, all containing fentanyl. Soldiers keep watch 24-7, preserving the scenes for prosecutors and preventing cartel members from restarting production here. Despite what we saw, and scenes like these, Mexico's president claims, Aquí nosotros no producimos fentanyl. Here in Mexico, we do not produce fentanyl, he said, instead turning it on the U.S., essentially asking why the U.S. can't fix its own social decay comments that immediately made headlines across the country. China's foreign ministry points the finger in the same direction. They told us, quote, using China as a scapegoat will not solve the drug crisis in the United States. With U.S. drug overdoses at record levels and a relentless demand for opioids, blame shifts from one country to another. International cooperation appears increasingly unlikely. If we had Mexico actually working with us, you could actually work against the precursors coming in and actually targeted Chinese companies from Mexico. That was a bit neoconish, but then again, at the same time, I still have some neocon in me, especially when it comes to military situations. And I got to be honest with you right now, that's not a bad idea. I actually like that. You know, if there's one thing that you have to understand about Mexico is that militarily they cannot stand for the United States. We would just roll right over them. I'm not advocating for war with Mexico, YouTube. I just want you to know right now, I'm not advocating for war with anybody. However, these cartel pushers continue to throw this crap uh, into our streets. They continue to bring it over. If we know who they are and we know who their handlers are, then maybe uh, what Vivek said there may be an actual honest-to-God solution. It's not going to fix anything right off the bat, but it would at least provide us a temporary measure so that way the incoming uh, leadership, assuming it does get near, which I personally believe it will, could uh, then enter another trade war, therefore making it less likely for them to want to send methamphetamines uh, to our country and creating more and more and more zombies, more and more walkers. Don't worry, I'll give you guys some more thoughts at the end of the video. But the thing is this right here. If you can hit this section, keeping it from coming in uh, to San Diego, actually crack down on the ships coming in, actually investigating, actually doing some literal searches, then uh, you may not have to worry about the simpish governors that we have in states like California, Oregon, and Washington State, and of course Chicago, Illinois, where they actually want the illegals to come over there, but obviously they're not listening to their voters because black voters are being replaced. As I've said before, the 2024 Democratic National Convention in the city of Chicago is going to be a very interesting one to watch. The fact of the matter is, is that we are dealing with a drug war, and a lot of this has got to do with the fact that we have an extremely feckless administration and we have leaders that would much rather pander than actually fixing the problem. So, yes, I agree with Vivek. I also agree with the incoming potential Trump administration's policies towards China. And I also agree with, yeah, that's right, strapping down the illegal fentanyl dealers here in the United States. Because look at the amount of death that they are purveying on us. This is not something to laugh about and I think that those right there could be actual honest solutions to the problem rather than those good old-fashioned trade-offs that we are used to but uh, let me end this video with a question to you guys out there in the event of a zombie apocalypse would you rather face the walker from the walking dead or would you rather face the infected from the last of us the reason why I'm bringing that up is because normally the walker from The Walking Dead is typically a little bit slower than the infected from The Last of Us. Then you've also got this one here. You know, if you actually call it what it is, it rhymes with another word and YouTube's algorithm may actually uh, demonetize your video or possibly uh, strike the video. And then, of course, you've got the bloaters and you've got the stalkers. I don't know about you guys, but I think I would rather face the... Uh, I think I would rather face the walker from The Walking Dead rather than the infected who over time with the fungal infection became a superhuman that's just me guys john claymore if you guys like this content please hit the like button subscribe share the video sign off in the comment section there will be another video out tomorrow where i'm going to be coming back to the whole uh, cleopatra take because uh there is actually some things that uh got brought up in the comment section i went back and researched and don't worry i'll be doubling down much much harder than i normally do guys john claymore here make sure you guys hit that like button subscribe Share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later.